Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to share with you today. Uh, the topic shared today is a uh, pipe link on Beam. How does it actually work? Uh, I will uh, divide the content of the talk into three sections. First of all, I'd like to introduce what's Beam on Flink and what's Flink on Beam. Then I'd like to report that uh, what did PipeLink on Beam do? Uh, that is, I will show you how does PipeLink on Beam actually works. Finally, I would like to introduce the mission and the roadmap of PipeLink. Before today's sharing, I'd like to make a brief introduction to myself first. My name is Jin Cheng Sun. I'm staff engineer at Alibaba. I have been involved in ASF since 2016. And uh, here I'd like to share one of my favorite words that is, be as good as you can, regardless of what it leads you. Okay, let's start the first section of talk. Beam on Flink and Flink on Beam. As we know, Beam is an advanced unified programming model. It implements batch and streaming data processing jobs that run on any execution engine. So Beam on Flink means that user can using Beam API write Flink jobs. Beam will help users translate the calculation logic described by Beam API into Flink's job topology. Of course, the integration of other computing engines in Beam is similar to Beam on Flink. So how does Beam transform the job described by Beam API into Flink job? There are many operators in Beam, such as Padu, group by key, Blyton, and so on. Those operators have uh, corresponding translators in the beam to translate them into operators with, with the same semantics of a Flink, uh, such as uh, Padu will be uh, translated into the rich flat, flat map. Uh, there will also be uh, corresponding translators for aggregations, windows, and so on. <clears throat> so that, so what, what is the Flink on Beam? Uh, as we know, Flink is developed by Java. Before Flink 1.9, only Java Scala API was supported. But how to support multi-language in Flink? In terms of multi-language support, Beam is excellent and the Beam portability framework is very natural and highly abstract in design. Flink can reuse the infrastructure provided by Beam Portability Framework in terms of multi-language support. In other words, we can easily we can easily to reuse the basic service and data structure at Flink Runner and Function API level. This will make it very easy for Flink to support multi-languages, which will be show you in the following contents. Beam on Flink means users can use Beam API to write Flink jobs. So how do users choose to use the Beam API or Flink API to write Flink jobs? This decision has a lot to do with your company's existing uh, technology, uh, technical architecture and specific business. For example, if your business involves multiple computing engines such as Spark for batch and Flink for streaming, the Beam API is your best choice. And if you if if Flink can solve all of your business needs, you only want to choose the development development language, then using Flink API is enough. Okay. After a brief inter, uh, introduction to Beam on Flink and Flink on Beam, let's move on to the most important part of today. What did PyFlink on Beam do? PyFlink is uh, the, the Flink Python API. There are two levels of requirements to be solved. The first uh, is the API level, and another is the support of Python user-defined functions. 
Flink required to uh, to provide de declarative uh, table API, circuit, and stateful data stream API. Regarding Python user defined function, the execution environment is required. For API support, we need to consider several important aspects. Python is only one of language entry and shouldn't affect the semantics of existing Flink operators. So the most important thing at the Python API level is to align with the Java API. Performance is also very important. Uh, uh, Pipelink needs to, needs to share optimization model with Java. At the same time, according to the existing features and architectures of, of Flink, the communi communication between JVM and PVM and uh, support interactive programming also should be considered. So we should know that the core problem to support Python API is the communication between VMs. So how can we solve it? Okay, uh, let's take a look at the architecture of PyFlink API. We use Py, uh, PY4J to solve communication problems. Start a gateway in Python VM and also need a, a gateway server in Java uh, VM to accept a Python request. And uh, provide the class definition exactly aligned with the Java API. For Python user defined function support, we also have same requirements. In the future, Flink should support not only Python language, but also R, Go, and other language. So we should share the same architecture for every language which Flink want to support. Flink is a framework and uh, distribute processing uh, engine for stateful compu computation over unbounded and bounded data stream. And Python user defined, fun defined function should be stateful. In addition, Python dependence management and Python user defined, fun defined function deployment mode and the uh, maintenance uh, also very important requirements. Beam's existing architecture meets almost more all of the above user-defined function support requirements. Beam supportability framework introdu introduces well-defined language natural data structures and protocols. At the execution layer, the function API is provided which is for language-specific user-defined function execution. The function API is highly abstract and it includes several uh, generic uh, gRPC service, such as control service, data service, the data service, etc. Which make it um, not only available for Beam, but also third party projects which require uh, multiple uh, language support. So, Beam is the best choice for Flink to provide uh, Python language support. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at the user-defined function architecture of PyFlink. To support uh, user-defined function, we need to add the API of user-defined function registrations and also need to add the dependence management APIs. After finish the Python job deployment, let's take a look at behavior of Python and Java operators at runtime. Task involves the execution of Java and Python operators. In Python user defined, defined function operators, we will design various gRPC services for communication between Java VM and Python VM. Those services are built based on function API of Beam. At last, the user, user, the user defined function is executed in Python workers. Uh, the, then use gRPC service to retain the results to Java VM. And I'd like to call this part of design is PyFlink on Beam. Of course, the worker of Python is not only process mode, but also a Docker mode or even an external service cluster. The most important thing about PyFlink on Beam is how to execute Python user-defined function with infrastructure of Beam. Let's have a look at 
how we use Beam's portability framework in PipeLink for Python user defined function execution. As we know, that a job is usually made up of multiple operators. Each operator re represents a specific uh, compute logic. For example, reading data from external storage, storage system, performing a series of transformations on the input data, and writing the result to external storage system. Most computing engines are implemented in one language such as Flink written by Java. However, the user-defined function, trans, uh, user-defined transformation uh, logic may be written in other languages, such as Python, Go, and, uh, and so on. Take the above pipeline as an example. example. Supposing that Padu represents a user-defined Python function, then an executable stage was introduced in Beam, which contains all of the necessary, necessary information about the user-defined Python function, such as the input data, output data, type, input data types. The user-defined function payload, the state and the timers used in user-defined function. Besides, Beam has provided a Java library which co could uh, could be used to manage the language specific execution environment for stage will according to the information defined in executable stage to support the necessary process uh, called the SDK harness to execute the user defined function. Establish the connections between runner and SDK harness, uh, for example. Uh, date channel for date transmission and state channel for state access. Beam supportability framework also provides multiple SDK harness which are used to execute user defined functions written in different language. For each SDK harness, it is supposed to execute multiple kinds of functions. Different functions have different execution patterns, so the SDK harness has, has defined the specific operation class to execute it. But how we can clearly define the execution logic of each function in the BIM? This is BIM's plug-in management of operation. To tell which kind of functions to execute, a URN is defined for each type of function. Regarding to the Python SDK harness, which is currently used in PyFlink, it works as follows. During the start, uh, start, uh, startup phase, the Python SDK harness will establish the URN and the operation mappings for all the built-in operations. The key point here is that it is supposed to register custom URN and operations. During the in initialization phase of processing a new bundle, the runner will send the URN together with the function payload to the SDK harness. The SDK harness could construct the uh, corresponding operation according, according to the given URN. The operation is then used to execute the user-defined function logic with the input data, which means that it can register any other uh, user-defined uh, user URN and create any other operation. Let's take a look at how PipeLink on Beam actually works. Uh, the picture uh, shows the basic workflow is a special, uh, a specific uh, Flink uh, operator was used to execute the Python user-defined functions defined in PipeLink. In the initialization phase, the Flink operator constructs an executable stage which contains all of the necessary information about the Python user defined function to be executed. Next, the Flink operator will start up the Python SDK harness. This is achieved by calling the Java library provided by Beam Supportability Framework. The entry point of the Python SDK harness is provided by Flink. It wraps the entry bound of Beam's SDK harness. 
The main purpose of providing a custom entry point in Pipelink is to register the custom operations and coders used by Pipelink. Lastly, the Flink operator could send da input data to the Python SDK Harness. The Python SDK Harness executes Flink's Python user defined function and send back the execution results. Uh, let's show an example of uh, executable stage instance. We can see that it, it contains the payload of the uh, Python function. Besides, it also contains a special URN, which indicates, indicates that this is a Flink Scala function. We, we can see that it also contains the URN uh, the URN and the payload of the input and the output coder. Of course, there are many details, but the most important thing about Pipelink and Beam are build executable stage and the opera add operations coders by registering URN. All the URNs of operations and coders should be registered in Harness. Okay, here also an example of how we register the custom operations and coders used in Pipelink. We have added a few functions which are used to create custom operations and coders. And we can see that is very simple. Of course, another very important feature is Python dependence management. We can talk about it in another speech in the future. Okay. I would like to see it's easy to add multiple language support based on Beam. Uh, at the end of my part, uh, let's take a look at the roadmap and mission of Pipelink. Pipelink always aims to expose the Flink functionality to Python users and integrate Python functionality into Flink. First, uh, so the communication problem between VMs then export Java API, table API and to Python users, which is done in Flink 1.9. Next, uh, we need to pre prepare for the integration of Python functionality into Flink by integrate Beam. Then provide uh, execution environment of Python user-defined function and add the dependence management for the user-defined function, which is uh, what Flink 1.10 does. Yeah, in order to further expand the distribute function of Python ecosystem, Pipelink will provide the support of Pandas series and data from data structure that is user can directly use the user-defined function of Pandas in Pipelink. At the same time, we add Python user-defined function support in circle land for machine learning problems, we also need to uh, uh, need add ML pipeline API of Python. And the metrics is uh, most important for production. So we also add the metric management for user-defined function. They are already uh, released in Flink 1.11. In the future, we need uh, to carry out performance optimization and uh, Daystream API Pandas native API and so on. This is the roadmap of Pipelink and let's looking forward to it. Okay, that's all and thank you. Thanks for the talk, Yin Sheng. And um, if you want, we can answer some questions now. I have a question here for you. Uh huh. Um, yeah. From the Slack channel. So, is it possible to run Pipelink without using Docker? Because I can't use Docker in my company. Mm -hmm. Do you know, is it possible to use Pipelink without Docker? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the answer is uh, yes. Uh, currently, the Python worker uh, of Pipelink runs in separate uh, Python per, per size. And this is by default uh, behavior. And, uh, but uh, we, we, are, we are also plan to support to uh, configure it runs in a Docker container in the next uh, release. Of course, currently we can uh, run. Yes, uh, 
can we can run Python uh, in a precise mode. Okay, that's great to know. And another question: um, Are timers in state supported by PyFlink? Uh, sorry. Hi, what about timers and state? Can you use them in PyFlink? Uh huh. For currently, for the last uh, release one point eleven, we we do not uh, add that uh, features. But uh, for the next release, we plan to add the data stream API for Python for PyFlink. At that time, we will plan to add timer and state for PyFlink. I see. Mm -hmm. All right, then um, we we are unfortunately out of time. Thank you so much for your talk, Yin Cheng. Thank you. Bye bye.